Hey guys, I'm Matt, and welcome to my office this week. <laughs> For this week's video, I'm gonna be sharing a project that I completed actually a month ago, but I wanted to wait to share the video until I had gathered a month's worth of data. And a month has passed, so I'm ready to discuss that project with you. Now, when we first moved into the house here, uh, I was concerned about our potential electricity bills. Uh, there is no gas here, everything in the house is electric, so our clothes dryer, oven and range, hot water heater, and our heat are all electric. Uh, we do have an electric heat pump, uh, which is more efficient than a, you know, a standard electric furnace, but I was concerned that we could get hit with some pretty high electricity bills. So uh, shortly after we moved in, I installed an Emporia View energy monitoring system. And this is a neat little system that uses current transformers to monitor not only the total power usage, but also power used on individual circuits. And I bought a 16 channel version, so I was able to monitor 16 circuits with that. My entire goal was to go after energy hogs. I just wanted to know where was the most electricity being used and how could I potentially increase our efficiency. And the results were really telling. Uh, our top four energy users from number four to number one. Number four was our clothes dryer, but it really wasn't that much. When I extrapolated that out over a year, it ended up being about $70 a year. And uh, you know, if I was to buy a new clothes dryer, it would take 20 years to recover the cost of that. And so I threw that one out right away. It, you know, it's just, it doesn't make sense to try and chase after energy efficiency with a new dryer. Uh, number three was our home theater system. Uh, I have a fairly robust home theater system and um, I have battery backups and everything else. All that takes a little bit of power, so can't really change that. Number two was this room right here. It's because I have a few desktop computers in here and uh, it actually uses quite a bit of power to do the AI processing that I do for work. I also have my 3D printer in here. So, And then number one was our hot water heater. And this was far and away the biggest user of electricity. So it used around 14.4 uh, kilowatt hours per day of electricity. We pay 14 cents per kilowatt hour and this works out right to $2 a day in electricity costs under normal usage. If you uh, work that out, it ends up being about $720 a year. That's actually a lot of money, uh, $720 a year just for hot water in the house. And so I decided, hey, I'm gonna chase down some efficiency and see if I can save some money here. Now the water heater we had was a 45 gallon model with standard electric immersion elements. And my research turned up that these are at best 90% efficient. Now on first thought, you might think, well, that's not too bad. I'll, I mean, all you can do is 100% efficiency, right? Well, not quite, because uh, they make uh, heat pump hot water heaters, and those use a little mini heat pump inside the water heater to extract thermal energy from the surrounding air. So how can you get more than 100% efficient? That doesn't seem possible. Uh, well, it uses electricity to turn a compressor and uh, that's the only energy that's used. And then the compressor uses a refrigeration cycle to extract heat from the air, and it puts that heat into the hot water uh, inside the, the uh, water heater. You know, just doing some looking, I discovered that uh, my local Home Depot stocked uh, Rheem brand hot water heaters, and uh, their Proterra models claimed a 400% efficiency when running on the heat pump. I was a little skeptical of these manufacturers' numbers, so I did a little more research and I found a company that did an independent test of this water heater. And they said under real world conditions, they experienced about a 275% efficiency. That was good enough for me. I decided, well, I'll just kind of round the numbers and say I expect about a two thirds reduction in my electricity costs. Uh, that works out to $240 a year. You know, if I spent $2,000 on a water heater, the payback period would be four years, roughly four years. And this to me is a no-brainer. I'm gonna be in this house for more than four years. Makes sense to buy another hot water heater. And so I bought a new water heater. The model that I purchased was a 65 gallon Rheem Proterra water heater. And this is a hybrid water heater. So it has a heat pump that draws about 300 watts when it's running. It takes a long time to heat the water using this method, but it's very efficient. It also has immersion heaters that draw about five kilowatts, and these are 90% efficient. So it's capable of high demand, uh, keeping up with high demand, but it's also very efficient when the demand is low. So I'm gonna take you guys along on the installation. And like I said, I did this a month ago, so I have a month's worth of data to share with you uh, after we go through the installation. 
the obvious first step is to locate our water shut off, but when I pulled the uh, cover off here, all I saw in here was dirt. <laughs> we definitely have a mole problem around here. It looks like they've deposited a ton of loose dirt inside of there. Fortunately, it's pretty easy digging. I've already pulled a bunch of shovelfuls out. Hopefully I can get down to where there's an actual water shut off in there and hopefully it works. If you can see down in there but I found the locate wire here so that's good and I see a little piece of pipe here so I can't do much more shovel digging I'm gonna go get a garden trowel and see if I can dig around that pipe and hopefully there's a functional valve in there That's a ridiculous amount of dirt. But I do have the valve exposed in under here. This is just a dead end. That is a one inch PEX. Looks like PEX B, because it's got a pinch clamp on it. And then uh, my shutoff valve here. So I'm about to take a risk. Hopefully this thing works. Oh man, it feels like it's gonna. Okay, let's go test and make sure the water's off. Get the TP valve open to vent the water heater and we're just gonna gravity drain all the water that's in there out. We'll check for leaks here.
we've got a little tiny leak up here. But here I see it leaking. Hopefully that wasn't, uh, hopefully that was leftover water from Check that again in a minute. Future Matt here. There was a copper water line right up against the drywall and it just happened to be dead center where I was pushing that hole saw through. That is some bad luck. But it's a good thing that I found that water shut off before I started this project. <laughs> you alright? Well... No, you're okay. No injuries? How was I supposed to know that was back there? Well, I swear I didn't stage this for the video. This is not what I had anticipated doing tonight. There's a little piece of copper right here with a perfect indent of a hole saw in it. Yeah, when I was drilling a hole in the wall for the condensate line with the hole saw, I hit that water pipe. Please do not judge my copper sweating skills. This is not something I normally do, and I was lucky that I had those uh, half inch copper fittings and some silver free solder and some flux because it's uh, New Year's Eve and everything is closed. Good news is the water heater is working. It's heating using the energy saver method. So I think one heating element plus the heat pump. There's uh, cool air coming out of here. Uh, no problems with any of my fittings or anything up there. It does say, and I already went through this, this little alarm right here. According to the app and, and up here on the screen, it says leak detected. There's no leak. Unfortunately, when I cut the pipe, it sprayed water all over underneath the hot water heater into the leak detection device here, as well as clear over into that pile of clothes and the piano. So <laughs> this thing is gonna say leak detected now, I think for probably a day or two until all that dries out. But I got a fan out here and a hair dryer, and I'm gonna try and get it all dry underneath there. And hopefully we can clear that alarm. All right, fast forward 31 days and this water heater has been working perfectly ever since. Obviously I haven't quite finished the drywall repair where I had to cut out and repair that copper, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's one of those things. I will get to that when I do other drywall repairs out here in the garage. But it is running right now in the heat pump mode. It is very quiet, especially out here in my, my garage. If this was installed like on a floor with like wooden floor joists, I could see maybe the compressor, you know, the, the noise being amplified through the through the joists. That's not a problem out here. It's installed on uh, concrete and I cannot hear it in any way in the adjoining room. So what about power usage? Well, I have 31 days worth of data. I will share that with you. It is steadied out somewhere at around four kilowatt hours per day, which is less than one third of the power that my old hot water heater was using. 
which is amazing. So my calculations are great. I, I worked out the payback period to be about three and a half years for this water heater. And the nice thing is, is it doesn't run out of hot water uh, like the old one did. Uh, like I said, I think we had a 45 gallon water heater before, this is a 65. So when we take two back-to-back -back showers now, the second person does not get cold water at the end of their shower. So uh, no problems with this. I will say that the water that I sprayed on the bottom of this resulted in this thing saying that it had a leak detected for three whole days. I ran a fan there, I ran a hair dryer, I ran an air compressor to try and blow air out of there, and it just kept saying leak detected for three whole days which is annoying because it kept shutting the valve off and then every 24 hours I had to override that uh, to keep that valve open. So I will say if you try and do this yourself, don't get any water down there because it's a real pain in the butt. I'm gonna pull our energy usage data up on my iPad and I'll throw it here up on the screen and share it with you guys. So if we go back to when I first installed this, A typical week, uh, you can see right here, is 91.7 kilowatt hours. That's gonna be on our old hot water heater. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty typical. So 90, 90 kilowatt hours divided by seven is, uh, I, I, I worked it out over the entire monitoring period to be a little over 14 kilowatt hours per day. That's what our old hot water heater was using. We'll scroll ahead here to our new hot water heater. Um, you got 30, 20, so, I mean, there, here's a typical week right here, 21.3. This is only three kilowatt hours per day. Um, here's a week where we used about 30, which is a little over four kilowatt hours per day. But over the entire monitoring period, I worked out the new hot water heater to be just a little over four kilowatt hours per day. So what does all that mean? Well, I'll put all this together in a spreadsheet, throw it up here on the screen and uh, go over it with you. Okay, I've got this Excel spreadsheet that I created up in front of us, and I'm gonna just walk through it real quick. It's pretty simple. Up here, we've got our electricity cost. That's what we're currently paying for electricity right now. This right here is how much our old hot water heater was using on average per day, so 14.4 kilowatt hours per day. The new water heater is using four kilowatt hours per day, and I paid $1,770 for the new hot water heater. These right here are all calculated values and the old hot water heater cost per day works out to $2.02 .02 per day. The new one, 56 cents per day. It's a pretty significant savings of $1.46 per day. Multiply those values times 365, you get $736. That's how much the old hot water heater was costing us per year. The new one costs $204 for a savings of $531 per year. That's pretty significant. Uh, working that out, the payback period is 1,216 days or 3.33 years. So if our electricity cost remains fixed, which it will not, I happen to know it's going to be going up this year, so the payback is going to be even sooner. But if it was to remain fixed at 14 cents per kilowatt hour, our payback period would be 3.3 years. That's pretty fast. And as long as a hot water heater lasts at least three and a third years, everything after that is going to be gravy. So... I'd say this project was a success and was well worth the time and effort put into it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I know there's a little bit of talk in here and I don't know how interesting hot water heaters are to everyone else, but this was a pretty interesting project to me. I will probably do a video in the future with more energy saving projects and uh, I'll go over how much those have saved using this Emporia View system. But uh, for now, thanks for watching guys and we will catch you next week.